more than 15 years as a professional, Saul Alvarez has cemented his position as one of the best fighters in the world. Now, at 33 years of age, he looks to close out his career in style. His opponent is no stranger to success. Sharing Canelo's age, Jermel Charlo has cleared out the 154-pound division. Now, he moves up to encounter his biggest challenge yet. For Canelo, the bout proves a chance to add to his already stellar record. For Charlo, a win adds a certified Hall of Famer to his resume. On September 30th, Legacy is on the line. On December 2007, Jermel Charles started his professional career, starting a welterweight before settling 7 pounds north. Charlo acquired an assortment of experience, scoring stoppages, tallying decisions, and encountering tricky opponents. In 2014, he met his first test in the form of the tough gatekeeper, Gabriel Rosado. Despite his loss ridden record, Rosado possessed grit and determination, along with a big right hand. From the start, Rosado jumped on his opponent, testing his inexperienced foe. Charlo remained composed and used weaves and footwork to lead his opponent. Rosado tested his chin early, but soon Charlo settled down. Entering the fight second half, Charlo was landing the hardest shots, but Rosado remained on the third. In the sixth, a headbutt opened a cut on Rosado. Charlo's combos flowed as he piled on the points. But in the eighth, Rosado launched his full arsenal, shaking the young prospect. Charlo returned fire in the ninth, but Rosado kept coming. Rosado emptied the tank in the last round, but Charlo continued landing clean punches. In the end, Charlo earned himself a unanimous decision and passed his second test as a professional fighter. Having already established himself as a draw, Canelo was coming off his first loss against the more experienced Floyd Mayweather Jr. And though now a big name, questions remained about Canelo's potential, especially after his inability to adjust to Mayweather's slippery style. In his best win to date, Canelo held on box the undefeated Austin Trout, a man who'd previously upset the legendary Miguel Cotto. But in that bout, Canelo had displayed questionable stamina, spending more time playing defense rather than punching. His next opponent figured to test that stamina. Alfredo Angulo was a whirlwind of pressure. On top of possessing endless stamina, the Mexican could also crack. Casting aside his usually slow start, Canelo opened fire from the opening bell. He backed up the pressure fighter and easily deflected incoming arsenal. Hopeful that Canelo's fast start would falter, Angulo pressed back, but his foe proved too sharp and too strong. Canelo settled down in the fourth, but continued rocking Angulo. Angulo spent the fight hoping Canelo would tire, but his opponent nullified the advantage with vicious body shots. In the seventh, Canelo appeared to tire, but Angulo's courage only walked him deeper into the grind. The referee stopped the carnage in the tenth round. 
With a comeback victory on his record, Canelo then took on the Cuban Aries Landy Lara. Lara was an elusive southpaw with a crackling left hand. Lara had gone to war with Angulo before breaking the Mexican's orbital bone. But he was also the quintessential hot and cold fighter. He'd look great against Austin Trout, but suffered draws against Carlos Molina and Vanis Martiriosi. His sheepish approach reflected his attitude when he attempted to crash the Canelo Angulo post fight press conference and instead waited awkwardly for permission to speak. But he would soon regain his confidence. What were you thinking as you looked into Canelo's eyes? <laughs> On fight night, the two men started tentatively. Lara attempted to score and move, while Canelo pressed and targeted the body. For all his talking, Lara was moving excessively, overly retreating. At one point, he literally ran away from Alvarez. Lara did well whenever he stood still to punch, but it also gave Canelo a chance to score. Both men landed shots, and the damage was visible. In the end, Canelo slipped away with a split decision. Once again, Lara had come up short in a close fight. Meanwhile, Canelo established himself as a top junior middleweight in the world, but a bigger and more dangerous challenge loomed near. Entering 2015, talk emerged of a bout between Charlo and the undefeated Dimitris Andrade. The fight failed to materialize, and so Charlo took on Vanis Martiriosian. The Armenian was a skilled foe, whose only blemishes included a controversial draw against Lara and a close defeat to Dimitris Andrade. Though less aggressive than Gabriel Rosado, Martiriosian proved a more refined opponent. The bout proceeded as a fast-paced tactical affair. But in the latter half, Charlo asserted control, landing the flashier shots. It was another competitive bout, but Charlo secured the unanimous decision. Man, Charlo. Charlo continued looking for a big bout, but had to settle for former titleist Yoashim Alsin. The fight was a breeze for Charlo, as he ended matters in the sixth round. Charlo possessed ability and he would have a chance to show it. The road, however, would be less than smooth. In 2015, having earned his stripes against sluggers and boxers, Canelo looked for pound-for-pound -pound status. A year earlier, the Puerto Rican Miguel Cotto had pulled off an upset against the middleweight king, Sergio Martinez. Martinez has a considerable advantage in reach. Another one to the body, and he's down! Now, Canelo set his sights on the crown Cotto, but before that, he would have to barge through James Kirkland. Kirkland was a rugged pressure fighter, one who demolished opponents with stamina and perpetually moving hands. Out of the feet, he himself out. He's done. He's done. The ref better stop him for her. He's about to stop this fight. We won't need it long. He's gonna stop it! He was also vicious to both sparring partners and to opponents. I want to be on, on him so close, it's going to feel like we're <laughs> And the psychotic Kirkland had once been destined for superstardom, but bad habits, along with criminal dispositions, had slowed his momentum. Now, the Canelo fight proved the gateway to success.
Kirkland wasted no time in attacking. He stunned Canelo on the ropes. Hard right hand by Canelo. Kirkland firing away. Lands a left, lands another left. But the Mexican would soon return the favor. Canelo's right uppercut. Kirkland open to the right hand. Canelo taking his time and landing the big shot. Lord Hard right, right hand. hand. Down goes Kirkland. Canelo almost stopped Kirkland in the first. He tried to close the show in the second. But Kirkland wobbled up to him. Canelo recouped his energy and resumed the assault. Give Canelo the big shot though, Joe. And coming back. And tell him to come there he is. Uppercut, knocks Kirkland down. Seven. Okay, baby. Eight. Right uppercut continues to land. There's a perfect straight right hand. And surely going to stop the fight. What a performance by Canelo Alvarez. Now, Canelo and Cotto plan to meet in late 2015. Since hiring trainer Freddy Roach, Cotto had looked sensational in winning the middleweight title and defending it against top contender Daniel Gill. On top of this, Roach was unimpressed with both Canelo's stamina and skills. Our plan is to break, break, break him down early and get him in the late rounds. He fatigues badly in the late rounds. Fight night, Canelo started off slowly. Cotto, meanwhile, used his footwork to lure the natural counterpuncher into overcommitting. By the fourth, Canelo was landing the cleaner shots. When Canelo throws, he lands and lands sharply. Midway through the fight, Canelo had figured out Cotto's timing. On Roach's instructions, Cotto tried backing Canelo up. But he soon abandoned the tactic. Cotto never surrendered, and he did all the right things. He stayed on the move, jabbed, and threw combinations. But Canelo was too sharp, and his shots visibly moved Cotto. Canelo closed the 12th strongly, and hurt Cotto downstairs. In the end, Canelo won via unanimous decision. He was now the middleweight champion of the world. Entering 2016, Charlo was giving a shot at the vacant junior middleweight's trap. It would come against John Jackson. Jackson's only claim to fame had been a 2014 slugfest against future champion Andy Lee. A rip the shot. Oh, there's a right hand that drops Andy Lee! One which saw him run into a big right hand. Did nothing in the softball. And he's staggered him just a bit. Oh, look at that! Right hand, right back! Charlo seemed destined for the win. But Jackson stayed on the move. And the Texan flailed in the wind. Dynamite. Charlo was unable to pin down his opponent. And things became worse by the round. Desperately behind on the cards, Charlo charged ahead in the eighth. He'd come precariously close to suffering his first defeat, and it would prove one of the many times his power would bail him out. Canelo entered 2016 as the middleweight champion of the world, but many felt he was only holding it for the true king. From the steppes of Central Asia emerged the monster. The undefeated Gennady Gennadyevich Golovkin, colloquially known as Triple G, was a 2004 silver medalist whose power defied belief. There it is! Sack Thunder! In round number two, Predator at work! Down goes Rubio! Touch, touch, touch! 
Canelo was pressed to fight the dangerous Golovkin, but instead he signed on to fight a welterweight in Amir Khan. Already at a size disadvantage, Khan also possessed one of the worst chins in boxing. Canelo started off slowly, while Khan darted in and out. Canelo began connecting with body shots. Then, in the sixth, he struck. Taking away his energy and every oh! Oh, right Fans clamored for a Triple G fight, as did Khan's trainer, the wide-eyed Virgil Hunter. Fighters should fight each other. He did it. He got to quit hiding behind the flag and fight Triple G. But everyone would have to wait, as Canelo signed on to fight the undefeated junior middleweight titleist, Liam Smith. Smith pressed Canelo and attempted to give him a taste of his own body-punching medicine. But his approach played straight into Canelo's hands. The Mexican dropped Smith in the 7th and 8th rounds, before ending matters in the ninth. Canelo had dominated both fights, but boxing fans were left dissatisfied. But he had company, as Golovkin's 2016 year had also paled in comparison to his 2015 campaign. Still, the mega fight loomed in the horizon. In 2017, Charlo took on the undefeated Erickson Lubin. At only 21 years of age, Lubin pressed for a title shot. Despite Lubin's unimpressive record, the young man was quick to dismiss Charlo's skills. I've been in this game since I was four years old, so if you can come out wild and try to knock me out, it's not gonna happen. Charlo, for his part, failed to appreciate the critique. But Lubin did possess hand speed and athleticism, and some expected him to pull off the offset. Both men started off cautiously until a shockwave struck. His hammer, but 11 of his knuckles. Oh, Charlo just dropped Lubin! He's out, he's out. Charlo's team taunted their vanquished foe, and Charlo walked away from 2017 with two stoppage wins. Meanwhile, Boxing fans waited in anticipation for the Canelo Triple G bout. Instead, Canelo signed on to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. This was a clear money bout, as Chavez's only attributes were a size advantage and a big name, certain to attract a casual fan. Chavez Jr. hired the legendary trainer Nacho Berenstein and hoped to pull off the upset. Instead, Canelo trounced the bigger man, landing bombs, while Chavez Jr. cowered in hopes of hearing the final bell. The one side affair had its upside, as Canelo and Triple G met in the ring to announce their anticipated matchup. Many boxing fans were hard pressed to pick a winner. On the one hand, Canelo's best win had been against a smaller and older Miguel Cotto. On top of this, Golovkin was the master of tactical pressure fighting, which would surely test Canelo's stamina issues. On the other hand, Golovkin had struggled against his best opponent to date, when he was forced to go with the full 12 rounds for the first time in his career. His opponent, Daniel Jacobs possessed quick hands, power, and sharp reflexes. The very same attributes Canelo presented. And here we go. First punch of the fight is a Golovkin jab. Early on, Canelo appeared quicker than Golovkin and stayed one step ahead of his power-punching opponent. But by the fourth, Golovkin warmed up and began connecting. Canelo's defense prevented Golovkin from landing his bombs, but the Kazakh was at work in him. But Triple G is piling up numbers. There he is. Landing more punches. He's throwing more. And too often, Canelo is simply walking away and establishing that Triple G gets to be the aggressor. To make matters worse, Canelo discovered that Triple G was difficult to hit cleanly. In the ninth, Canelo tried to regain the momentum. But Golovkin forced him back on the defensive. Canelo landed the occasional hard shot, but Golovkin's jab continued piling up points. Canelo did well to limit Golovkin's offense, but it was too much moving and not enough punching. 
seemingly behind, Canelo let it all hang out in the final round. But Golovkin refused to concede. The round provided the best action of the night. But for many, Golovkin had clearly earned the win. But the judges had seen something else. 114, 114, a three-way split. This is officially a draw. Boxing fans derided the decision, and Canelo's mother appeared the lone dissenter. Porque la pelea la ganó mi hijo, clarita. Mi hijo ganó con todo, con todas las de la ley ganó. Pero no sé por qué le dieron empates y si él la ganó. In the end. Both men would have to relieve the action. In 2018, Charlo took on Austin Trout. Trout had been on a downslide since losing to Canelo in 2013. Losing subsequent bouts to Irislandi Lara, Charlo's brother Jermall, and finally suffering a stoppage against Jared Hurd. Still, after the near fiasco against John Jackson, the Trout fight would provide Charlo with an opportunity to improve against elusive fighters. The two men started cautiously and Charlo had trouble painting Trout. In the third, Charlo scored an awkward knockdown. He's starting to sting out of the pocket door, and now Trout. Bang! Down goes Austin Trout! But Trout fought back. A jab followed by a straight left by Austin Trout. The action was sporadic, with many shots missing, or being half blocked. Charlo scored another knockdown in the ninth, but again proved unable to finish Trout. Charlo landed a cleaner shot, but Trout remained tricky. And despite Charlo having landed the crisper shot, one just scored about a draw, the two others overrode him and awarded Charlo a majority decision. Still, the fans were displeased with Charlo's performance. Despite the mundane bout, Charlo remained undefeated, and a way to please fans would be to fight fellow undefeated powerhouse Jared Hurd. A massive boxer for his weight class, Hurd had stopped contenders Tony Harrison and Austin Trout. On top of this, he went on to beat Aries Lando Lara in the summer of 2018, dropping the elusive Cuban in the final round. And there was no love lost between Charlo and Hurd's camp. But instead of pitting two undefeated fighters with each other, the PBC promotional outfit matched Charlo with Tony Harrison. But a curious thing happened en route to the fight. Enrolled in VADA anti-doping testing, both Charlo brothers missed their tests on November 2018. The brothers were missing from both their homes and their gyms with the representatives being unable to offer a location. The Charlos never answered Vada's calls. The brothers would later claim to have been performing promotional duties for the Fox network, but no such record was ever presented. In the end, both fighters skated away without major repercussions. But for Jamel Charlo, the party was just beginning. Harrison was a skilled fighter, but his glass chin had already cost him twice. Fight. Good right hand, and, and he sends down the undefeated fighter. And so, the power punching Charlo was expected to have an easy time. Charlo and Harrison engaged in a jabbing contest. As the bout progressed, Harrison took over with superior timing. In the fifth. Harrison rocked Charlo, but the Texan returned the favor. Charlo continued being the aggressor, and he managed to land some power shots, but Harrison constantly out jabbed him. Charlo tried to close the show in the last round. But the knockout eluded him. 
in the end, he came up short. Harrison celebrated. I told y'all boys. I told my family. I told everybody. While Charlo was distraught. He told me walking up just right now. Whatever happened, he know what it is. You know I want to fight. He told me. But you know what? I accept that challenge. I ain't no loser, you know what I mean? I don't fucking take losses easy. I don't, I don't even play video games because I don't like losing. The ground was set for a rematch. Entering 2018, Alvarez and Golovkin prepared for a summer rematch, but a shocker postponed the bout as Canelo tested positive for a banned substance. Golovkin stayed active by easily dispatching of Vanis Martyriosian. But after the controversial draw versus Canelo, along with the positive test result, the man had more anger left to vent. Much later, the WBC would exonerate Canelo but many boxing fans remained unconvinced by the explanation, and Golovkin's trainer, Abel Sanchez, piled on Canelo. Abel, do you think Canelo will be more aggressive in the rematch? I, I sure hope so, because I think these fans deserve the kind of fight that they expected the first time. They deserve the kind of fight that he was talking about the first time, that he keeps talking about now, and that Oscar is saying now. First fight is not one that he can sell too many times and lie to these people like he did the first time. The Mexican fighter failed to appreciate trash talking. Les prometiste you fans promised your fans that he would knock me out. You, you promised us also you were going to fight the knock Golovkin out in 10. You Les prometiste que me ibas a noquear y no me hiciste nada. Y te hablo a ti porque tu peleador no dice nada. No corras. Eres el que más abres el hocico. No corras. Now, the fight was personal. HBO Pay-Per-View live from T-Mobile Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada. Determined to redeem himself, Canelo stood his ground. Golovkin uncorked his jab, but this time, Canelo refused to retreat. They didn't face off until the wane. Purposely stay away from each other. Now they're in the rain, they gotta go toe to toe. Both men landed hellacious shots. And Canelo focused on the body. The bout proved a back and forth affair. In the 10th, Golovkin scored with a booming right. But Canelo stood tall. The two men traded until the final bell. This time, Canelo walked away with a majority decision. In 2019, Charlo was on a mission to avenge his loss. He took a stay busy fight and then prepared for the Harrison rematch. Just like the Canelo Triple G sequel, this one was personal. I'm glad I kept my composure right now with this individual because I would have really did something bad to him right now. But I have to think about my career first. He, like I said, he live in his mind. I'm in his head too, so I, I know what he's talking. He, I'm in his head. That whatever you want to do, we can do at any given moment, cuz. I'm a tycoon in this. Has this gone past And I'm a real right? tycoon. I'm, and I run this. But he get up here and bark. He talk. He make excuses. Well, how the rematch gonna be different? I'm gonna knock his ass out. I look at all the people that say, oh, I, I'm, I'm a lion. I'm, I'm a lion's only motherfucking guy. I'm a, it's a, they, they like this cornball. This nigga's a fucking cornball. Now when the shit don't go your so, way, you act like so a fraud. So you act like a fraud. Oh, so when you win the judge, you got it wrong. You, oh, this, you had 12 hours to make your own fake, cuz. I, I will beat this man at, at, any, at anything we, we do. I'm just that better athlete. And I know my, in my heart, I would never lose to a sucker. He's a sucker. Charlo pressed the action, looking for the knockout, and the two men landed shots. In the second, the Texans scored a knockdown. Charlo went for the finish, 
Then, Harrison flipped the tables on Charlotte and began to advance. Combinations were the order of the day, but Harrison's shorter shots proved the more consistent blows. Nice little showboating there from Harrison. He's been blocking a lot of these punches. I have him up because of the work that he's doing on the inside. In the 10th, Charlo attempted to create distance, but Harrison continued pressing. Charlo started the 11 strongly, but Harrison remained determined. Then, Charlo's power emerged. Oh! 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 Harrison is hurt! Oh! Harrison's down! Over a minute left. Harrison hurt again by the hook. Harrison could go down again. The ropes are keeping him it's up. Over. Now he's wobbled. Oh! And down he goes. Third knocked out of the fight. Jack Reese is looking close. Jack Reese has ended it. Jamel Charlo is the champion of the world again. Charlo's vicious finish earned him the win. And now, he looked to establish himself as the number one junior middleweight in the world. With the Golovkin saga momentarily over, Canelo took on the next best contender in Daniel Jacobs. Since losing a competitive decision to Golovkin, Jacobs had strung together a series of solid wins and now looked for a second chance at the crown. And the American was primed for the bout and he let Canelo know as much during the win. Unfiltered, Canelo interpreted the interaction. Tiene miedo. Eso es miedo. Lo voy a decir en español para que todos se me entiendan. Que chingue a su madre. A big soul. A big soul. As a shorter man, Canelo was the aggressor. Jacob stayed sharp and flurried. But by the fourth, Canelo had found his timing. As his accuracy is the difference in some of these rounds, and his defense has been exceptional. Danny Jacobs just can't seem to get enough punches put together to make an impact on Canelo. In the sixth, Jacobs gave Canelo a new look by switching stances. But Canelo was unimpressed. Canelo struck from all angles, continually keeping Jacobs guessing. Jacobs set down on his shots in the ninth and boxed from the southpaw stance. In the tenth, Jacobs increased the activity. But Canelo continued sniping from the outside. Canelo stayed sharp in the final round. And in the end, he walked away with a unanimous decision. Now the unified middleweight champion of the world. Many fans clamored for a third Golovkin bout, but instead, Canelo moved up in weight and took on the light heavyweight titleist, Sergei Kovalev. Kovalev was one of boxing's hardest punchers, as proven in his last fight, a stoppage win over the younger Anthony Yardi. Kovalev was a much taller fighter than Canelo, and many wondered if the Mexican had grown overconfident. Canelo made himself a compact target, countering to the body as he pressed the bigger man. Canelo spent much of the fight nullifying Kovalev's shots, but his activity was limited by his unwillingness to overcommit. By the sixth round, Kovalev began to tire. Canelo continued pressing, but the fight remained close. Then, in the 11th, he upped the pace. Now a three-division titleist, Canelo established himself as the best fighter in the world. 
but it was far from finished. In 2020, Charlo looked for the best opponents. His potential big fight against Jared Hurd had dissolved when Julian Williams pulled off the opposite win against the bigger men. Yeah, Williams was putting that left hand out there. Oh, he got that middle left by Williams. Oh! oh down is Hurd in the ropes! Then, the Dominican Jason Rosario scored a surprise of his own by stomping Williams. Rosario was a strong junior middleweight, and though he'd been stopped before, he packed a mean punch. Rosario started off horribly, as a slip was counted as a knockdown. The Dominican dusted himself off and pressed forward. But Charlo remained ready to counter. Both men fired combos, with neither boxer wishing to surrender. In the sixth, Charles Power struck. Rosario was lucky to have dropped at the end of the round. Charlo continued moving in the seventh and struck again. Some felt as if Rosario had been acting by recreating an orgasm, but a replay showed that the punch had indeed landed on the solar plexus, a notoriously delicate area. In any event, Charlo had scored a win and was on his way to cementing his status as the king of the division. Canelo, meanwhile, moved down the division he'd bypassed and took on the undefeated Callum Smith. Smith had won the 168-pound version of the WBSS tournament and had an extra incentive to beat Canelo, for the Mexican had brutalized his brother Liam Smith four years earlier. Despite enjoying an immense height and reach advantage, Smith proved too slow for Canelo. The fight proved a one-sided affair, as Canelo easily deflected Smith's offense while unloading power shots. So the fight turned into a beating in the later rounds. Smith is getting beat up. He cannot stand there and take those shots. Hard right hand, Smith is hurt. Buckled on the ropes, that the ropes kept him up, but he's able to move off and gain his footing. But Callum Smith absorbed the shots. He made it to the final bell, but suffered a mangled bicep and a lopsided defeat for his troubles. Now, Canelo looked ahead to bigger fights. In 2021, Charlo was one step away from becoming the king of the junior middleweight division. Standing in his way was the undefeated Argentinian Brian Castaño. Though short for the division, Castaño made up for it with relentless pressure and combination punching. His only blemish was a controversial draw to Aries Lani Lara. Charlo would need all his faculties to overcome Castaño. From the start, Charlo fought in his classic style, retreating and scoping to land hard counters. In the second round, Charlo stunned Castaño and did his best to get the finish. In the third, he kept Castaño at bay, but the Argentinian had a surprise of his own. Castaño was relentless in the fourth and fifth rounds. Charlo fired back, but many of his shots were deflected and he was eating the cleaner shots. But Charlo had been in this position before and he was confident that his power could reverse his opponent's work. In the tenth, he wobbled Castaño. Charlo tried to end the fight, but in the 11th, Castaño was back in his face. The two men brawled, 
and made it the distance. Charlo had closed strongly, but many felt as if Castaño's work throughout the fight had been superior. Then, the decision shocked the boxing world. The decision is a split decision draw. Yeah, Judge Tim Sheedham, a man notorious for horrible scorecards, tallied the fight a tie. But Judge Nelson Vasquez horrified the fans when he scored about 117-111 for Charlo. Many complained about the ludicrous score. Even Charlo found it outrageous. Somebody had it like 117-111. 117 111 was a kind of a large range. In the end, both men would have to settle for a rematch in 2022. <laughs> Meanwhile, in 2021, Canelo Alvarez looked to clear the super middleweight division. His first top opponent of the year was the undefeated Billy Joe Saunders. A slippery southpaw, Saunders had not his share of solid wins. On top of this, he possessed the type of counter-punching style that usually troubled Canelo. But he was hungry for the win that would seal his legacy. Saunders was an unfiltered man, whose character bordered on the obscene. And he even involved his kids in the hijinks. Once again, Saunders attempted to play in mind games. The Jeep's Mexican is right. They're Mexican. We know. You had loads of beef. Yeah. You love the beef. The Mexican. You love the Jeeps. You've not seen yeah. nobody with the Saunders. You've not seen Thank you. You've not seen. Then, days before the bout, Saunders demanded a larger ring. And his team was all too happy to join in on the fun. What's happening with the ring, man? Come on, is this fight happening or not? We've come a long way. We've come a long way. Grow some. Grow some bollocks, man. Come on. Oh, I'll box you, man. I'll bust you up. Canelo took the affair in stride and bowed to the demand. On fight night, Canelo pressured patiently. Saunders remained composed and fired accordingly. But the Mexican's defense proved too sharp. Canelo is settling into a rhythm here. He's landing his power shots. And Billy Joe Saunders not throwing a lot of power punches back. In the middle of the fight, Saunders found his rhythm and scored some shots. But in the eighth, Canelo cracked him. Saunders was pulled out in between rounds. And it is over! They have stopped the fight! His father, however, still had some fight left in him. <laughs> With another top contender down, Canelo then took on yet another undefeated challenger, Caleb Plant. A tall and mobile foe, Plant's quick hands dazzled the crowd and judges. Plant grimed with confidence, but Canelo caught him by surprise. Well, I came at you, young boy, girl, with no Canelo, a novice with the English language, would later claim that he'd misinterpreted Plant's comments as being insults to his mother. But Plant had a different view. Did you see when he was talking to Boo Boo Andre? But now all of a sudden those words mean something completely different. On top of this, Plant was all too willing to remind Canelo of his past misdeeds. Is taking illegal substances, is that insecurity? Because taking illegal substances, like I said, that doesn't stem from confidence. That stems from fear. 
there. Saturday night, you got your first undisputed champ, and his name is Caleb Plant. Listos pay los chingazos. Listos pay los chingazos. Fight night. Plant did everything right. He moved, snapped the jab, and kept Canelo busy with flurries. But Canelo parried and dodged before firing his arsenal. Canelo moved progressively closer to Plant, but afraid of his opponent's power. Plant continued landing the occasional shot, but it was ineffective in keeping Canelo away. In the 11th, Canelo connected with a booming shot. In the end, the animosity vanished. And with that, Canelo had collected all the alphabet's traps, but an unfinished piece of business remained on the table. In 2022, Jermel Charlo and Brian Castaño agreed to a rematch. The bout played out much like the first, with Charlo retreating and firing combos, while Castaño pressured. This time, Charlo made an effort to reply after every shot he absorbed. By the midway point, Charlo appeared the fresher man. Castaño returned fire in the ninth, but in the tenth, Charles' power resurfaced. Charlo was now the king of the junior middleweight division. The next challenger was the undefeated Tim Zhu, but several complications would delay the fight. In the end, Charlo would receive a more lucrative opportunity. Meanwhile, Canelo Alvarez looked for his next opponent. Some fans clamored for the super middleweight who had been stripped of his title, the young David Benavides. A tall fighter, Benavides fought like a shorter fighter pressuring and dismantling his opponents. Despite his impressive performances, his record remained subpar, and Canelo moved up in weight to take on another undefeated foe. Hailing from Russia, the undefeated Dmitry Bivol was a master of distance, using fast salvos that perplexed opponents. Still, Canelo, confident as ever, decided to try his luck. As he'd done in recent fights, Canelo pressured his taller foe, backing him onto the ropes. For the first three rounds, it seemed as if Canelo would once again hammer his opponent en route to a victory. But soon, Bivol began to punch back. He 
Vol managed to strike and move before Canelo could counter. Moreover, the Mexican's one-shot-at-a-time approach was proving ineffective. Worse still, Canelo began to tire. His defense prevented Bivol from taking a more aggressive approach. But Canelo was still falling behind. In the end, Bivol walked away with a unanimous decision. Canelo had flown too high and was now forced to reevaluate his future. Months later, he dropped back down in weight and signed on to fight an old nemesis, Gennady Golovkin. Since their 2018 rematch, Golovkin had parted ways with Abel Sanchez and hired Jonathan Banks, trainer of the former heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko. With Banks in his corner, Golovkin had gone to war with the Ukrainian Sergei Dedevyachenko. And though now an older man, Golovkin was coming off a trouncing of the heavy-handed Japanese Ryota Murata. This would prove his final chance to beat his longtime nemesis. With the stakes high, the old animosity resurfaced. What what is it about him that you just don't yeah, like? He's, he's always talking about me. He's always talking of shit about me. I don't think about it. He's not on my mind. He pretends to be a nice guy, but he he's not. He's an asshole. That's why he is. What can I say now? That he's just a, I don't know a red mouse. This time, however. The bout took place at 168 pounds, and both men figured to be stronger than in their first two bouts. Diabolical, fiendish, savage. You may not walk away from this one. As in the rematch, both men took to the center of the ring. Golovkin attempted to force a natural counterpuncher to strike first. The Kazakh's jab was on display. But soon, Canelo's timing took over. Canelo remained one step ahead, firing off punches from all angles. In the ninth, Triple G attempted to reverse the momentum. But in the tenth, Canelo slowed him with a body shot. The action heated up in the championship rounds, and both men traded. In the end, Canelo walked away with a unanimous decision. In 2023, David Benavides and Caleb Plant met in a much-anticipated super middleweight bout. The grudge match started off badly for Benavides, as Plant consistently outmaneuvered him. But Benavides closed the show strongly and earned a unanimous decision. Meanwhile, Charlo and Tim Zhu's scheduled bout was continually delayed. Canelo, for his part, returned from surgery in 2023 and took on his mandatory challenger, John Ryder. Four years earlier, that tank-like Brit had given Callum Smith all he could handle before losing a disputed decision. Since then, he'd scored wins over Daniel Jacobs and the undefeated Zach Parker. Fight night, the two muscle-bound fighters met in the middle of the ring. Canelo took a slight lead, backing Ryder up. But by the third, Ryder began bleeding, and Canelo appeared unbothered by his punches. In the fifth, Canelo heard Ryder. But the Brit fired back and survived. In the sixth, Ryder fired volleys, but Canelo's sledgehammers soon had him reeling. Canelo continued backing Ryder up, while the Brit did his best work with short shots on the inside. Ryder's bleeding never stopped. But the bout devolved into a repetitive pattern of Canelo advancing while throwing single shots. 
in the end, Canelo dominated. But his approach made some wonder if, after more than 15 years as a pro, the Mexican was finally declining. In the middle of 2023, rumors swirled of a potential Canelo vs. Jamal Charlo bout. But the Texan had been inactive since the summer of 2021. Instead, his brother, the junior middleweight champion, stepped out to the plate. And so, on September 2023, Saul Alvarez and Jamal Charlo meet, with the winner likely to face a rising David Benavides. Will Canelo continue his decade of dominance, or will Jamal Charlo pull off the win? and cement his own legacy. Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one. Take it easy, folks. Thanks for watching.